is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel before we get started today i want to give a big thank you to everyone we hit 3,000 subscribers on the channel and uh the channel is growing and i can't thank everyone enough that comes in supports the channel uh watches my videos comments on my videos joins me in the live feed i really enjoy it guys can't thank you guys enough but today we have the gt500 and we are finally going to be installing the modifications that i've had for a little over a week now to the car we are going to get the car into the, that shop but before we do that i'm going to take you guys into the shop and show you kind of the progress that we are making with the cars in there as you know i have the s550 in here and we pull the engine out put a new engine in and uh, i'm making that all one video kind of a big time lapse video i thought it would be interesting um, I did that with the tent. I got a lot of uh, positive feedback from that So I'm gonna try it with this one and see how it goes But I'm gonna take you guys in here and kind of show you the progress of where we're at with it right now Dover's already in here What is going on Dover? All right, so as you can see that's the old engine right there and this is the new one right here We have already got the header zone, we've got the lower uh, intake for the supercharger on. He is actually supposed to be bringing us some uh, different injectors and things, so that's why we're waiting for that to install the supercharger and get everything ready to go up in the car. But it is coming together. Making brake lines? Yes, sir. Handy dandy. That's the Eastwood, ain't it? Yes, sir, it's nice. Yes. Man, it makes flaring and doing making brake lines so much easier. This going on Lee's car? Yes. Awesome. All right, so Lee's car has made a lot of progress, I think, since the last time y'all seen it. I don't think the the K member and all that was bolted in. They're mocking all that up. As you can see, they got the spacers up in there. Jeremy makes his own spacers. What thickness do you use, Jeremy? Depends. Depends on the build. Yeah. What's the most common? Half, three eighths, one of them. Half or three eighths. But uh, he cuts it, he drills it, and does everything, you know, makes them himself, so. The rear, where is the differential rear end for this car? It's getting powder coated. Oh, it's getting powder coated. That's where it's at. Okay, I was curious. Yes, sir. So it's coming along nicely, of course, the strawberry car. And you might already have this sold. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. Lots of interest. Lots of interest. It is going to be one sweet car when it's done. But we are about to get the GT500 into the other shop and get the drive shaft and the safety loop installed. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, what we have here is a drive shaft shop drive shaft. Now, not only is this lighter, but it is also stronger. And that is the primary reason that I am installing it because I have seen several of these cars out on the drag strip twist or break a drive shaft. And I do not want that happening uh, when I'm trying to race this car down a drag strip. So as a kind of a preventative measure, we are installing this now before we start racing it um, a lot. So, uh, not only is it stronger, but as I said, it is lighter. So, I think this weighs between 20 to 22 pounds, from what I understand. And uh, I think the stock one weighs around 40. Anytime you take the weight off the rotational mass of the drivetrain, you, pick, you can pick up acceleration in the car. So, uh, several benefits to having a, a drive shaft. But my main reason is it is stronger, and that's what I need. But... Also, we have a BMR, and uh, I love I love this hammer tone finish. I really do love it. But we have a BMR drive shaft safety loop. Now, if you race at a lot of tr tracks, some NHRA tracks, 
they require this if you run a certain ET or mile per hour, especially if you're running an aftermarket drive shaft. So it's even it's even great thing to have on a stock drive shaft because if a drive shaft breaks, not only can it hit the road and cause things to happen like if it depends on where it happens how it happens it can actually cause you to wreck not only that is it can bounce up and destroy the floor pans on a car so it's always a great thing to have so we're going to be installing the bmr drive shaft safety loop and the drive shaft shop shop <laughs> i said that one too many times but we're going to be installing this stuff today guys so we're going to get the car up on the rack and get started I don't know if you guys can hear that. That is Caleb coming. I've been hearing him for a while. I've been hearing that car for a while now. And there he is. Watch, he's gonna rev it up. Oh, hold on. I guess not. He's, oh, he will. He proved me wrong. Oh, he will. He will? Oh. That, yep, there it goes. <laughs> I heard you coming from miles away, man. <laughs> Dover walked out of the shop, and he walked out of the shop, and he was like, I hear Caleb. I said, I've been hearing him for a minute now. <laughs> you saying it's loud or what? No, it sounds great. This car is the most fun you can have with your pants on, I swear to God. I know. <laughs> One of you commented about the refrigerator that was sitting right here. As you know, it is gone, and we actually have a refrigerator in the main shop now. Somebody made a comment. I thought it was. I thought it was funny. Me and Dover got a kick out of it. But hey, it worked. Hey, it worked. Yeah. Wasn't that taking shop room up? Exactly. With this shop, we couldn't afford anything taking shop room. With that shop, it's a little bigger. We can fit stuff in there. All right, so basically all we got to do is we're going to have to drop, unbolt this and drop this section down a little bit so we can get the drive shaft out. And I don't think, I don't think I'm going to have to take this off. I might have to take this section off to get the drive shaft safety loop in because it goes here. So I'm going to see what kind of clearance. I might have to unbolt these and move them around and play with them and figure it out. But we are going to get that done right now. got the exhaust dropped down and we're going to have to take those 12 millimeter 12 point bolts out and then these are 10 millimeter back here take all these out and then you've got the bolts right there there are 13 if you can see them the two bolts right there and then this drive shaft will come out so that's what we're going to do One thing real quick, for the GT500, it comes with this plate and it's already mounted onto this. Uh, and basically all this does is this bolts in where the rear drive shaft bolts in, it's kind of like a spacer. And it bolts in and then the drive shaft will bolt to it. So this is gonna bolt to the pinion on the, uh, the pinion flange on the differential and then this will bolt to that. So that's what we're gonna do right now and then get this thing in.
unfortunately, when you have several aftermarket parts, sometimes stains clash. And basically, this is what I'm running into. I went by the instructions on the VMR. That's the exact way they say to mount this. As you see, I've got this bolt in, but this bolt is not lining up. It's got to go back. Well, this exhaust where it curves in is the issue. On the stock exhaust, as you can see the shielding right here, the stock exhaust comes back further, then curves in and comes back, and I think the H is back here. If that, if I had the stock H pipe or something that fit exactly like the stock H pipe, this would not be an issue. But, however, this is an issue. As you can see, not only am I having issues with this hitting, I'm having issues this is going to touch. So not only am I going to have, and I don't have this all the way bolted up, but we've we've had it bolted up and we've been playing around with it. And so when it's bolted up, it touches here. And then, of course, we have the issue where it's not going to go back. Now, I can modify this bracket, and that's what we thought about doing. We'll just modify the bracket. We'll make it, this bracket right here will make it work. Not a big deal. However, we're running into the issue where this is hitting the H right here. And there's no sense in cutting this all up when I'm having this issue. So I'm going to take the drive shaft back loose. I'm going to take this back off and we're not going to have a safety loop right now. But this drive shaft should not break. Don't you agree? It shouldn't break. No, I put that on there for safety measures. And if I go to a track and they look, I'm clear. But however, we're just going to have to go with a different... Bracket. It's not any fault of the H pipe. It's not any fault of the BMR. It's when you start putting aftermarket pieces on, um, sometimes they just clash. And, and this is stuff that you run into when you're modifying a car. Like I said, I'm not going to bash either company, um, but it's, it's just the way it is. So unfortunately, we're going to take it back off and sit back and figure out what in the world is going on. Oh, man. It, it's discouraging, guys. It really is. And the thing about it is, is that once these pipes are bolted up, you know, up there, this pipe is where it's gonna be. You can't, you can't change where it's gonna be. It's, it's, it, this is where it is. And it just makes the bend uh, slightly sooner than the stock one does. So there lies the issue. All right, so I did a quick Google search to figure out if anybody else has had the issue that I've had with the drive shaft safety loop, BMR drive shaft safety loop interfering with the lethal H pipe. Uh, when I Googled that, I basically just Googled a lethal H pipe issue with BMR safety loop, and it gave me a link to lethal performance to buy the drive shaft safety loop. So I flipped on there and started scrolling down. I said, okay, I'll go down in the description and I'll look. And if you look, it says, may interfere with Cook's or lethal X H pipes. Right there. On their site i did not buy it from lethal performance i bought it straight from bmr so uh i said okay well let's go <clears throat> let's go and let's see if bmr gives the same thing maybe i overlooked it because sometimes when i'm buying stuff you know sometimes you overlook you research but you overlook so i scroll down and scroll down and it tells all about it I go down in features, looks at it, application, blah, 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 blah. I even went to installation instructions, which is the same installation instructions I have. And it says nothing on there about may interfere. But now, you know, it's not their responsibility to say that because uh, when companies do uh, develop parts, they develop it on a stock style setup. So it, their parts work with stock and stuff. So hey, we're going to take this back off. Uh, take it back off real quick, put the exhaust back up, and get this thing back on the road. I've been fooling with this entirely too much, trying to figure out what in the world is going on. And a simple Google search, you know, Lethal, shout out to Lethal uh, on their site. If I would have bought the, if I'd have bought this from Lethal Performance, um, like I bought the H-Pipe, then I would have seen that that was going to be an issue with the H-Pipe. But, you know, normally you don't think of these, these would be issues when you buy parts. But like I said, Different aftermarket companies, you start putting aftermarket parts on the car, you run into these issues. I just want to let you guys know that if you have a GT500 and you have a Lethal or Cooks, which I'm pretty sure they're the same company, makes them. But if you have one of those H-pipes, uh, do not get the B, this BMR safety loop. It will not fit.
All right, so we got it all back together. As you see, we got the, of course, we got the BMR. We took the BMR safety loop off, and we've already talked about that. But uh, I got the exhaust all back up, got the drive shaft all bolted in, and uh, the new uh, drive shaft weighs 21.5. I actually lost the footage. I accidentally deleted it when I was deleting something else, and uh, yeah, it's my fault, guys. Totally my fault. It's uh, 37.2 pounds, and this one is 27, uh, 21 and a half pounds. So you're looking at roughly 16 pound difference, you know, roundabout. We're gonna take this thing down the road and uh, play with it just a little. All right, let's go see how it feels, guys. See if there's any vibrations, anything that's noticeable. Could just be me. It does feel like it accelerates just a little bit faster. Actually feels a little smoother to be honest with you. But we're gonna get out here and uh, drive it, get it up to speed, make sure there's no vibrations, no anything. Cause sometimes when you put a drive shaft in, you do have to go back and clock it if you get any kind of uh, vibrations. But as right now, everything seems to be fine. I can tell that uh, we changed something up, like it's just a different feel. tell a difference it's just something there i can't quite put my finger on like uh it's not a harshness it's not a vibration it's just a feel when i accelerate but it's nothing bad it's great no vibrations so we're, we're good to go definitely smoother acceleration yeah feels like it accelerates a little quicker of course it's you know 16 17 pounds off the drive line on a rotational mass so it's yeah it's gonna it's gonna feel that way all right so we're gonna see we're gonna do a little pull and maybe she'll hook maybe she won't but we'll find out so rollings are really easy Woo! got it <laughs> man that was good she actually grabbed guys yeah. everything feels great definitely a great drive shaft uh you know, no complaints here. Everything feels good. No vibrations. Uh, it does feel a little different, but it's going to. I went with a one-piece aluminum drive shaft, but it's nothing that uh, I would say anything bad about because you know it's you you pick up on it, it's real subtle. I don't really know how to put my finger on it, but it's it's nothing it's nothing bad. It's just you know just a, I think you just feel the car a little more. You know, you might say it. I, you know, if I could put my put a description to it but nothing bad everything feels great uh highly recommend dss drive shafts uh they've been around for a long time they've been a great company all right we are back here at dover's uh i'm gonna go in and work on the s550 a little bit you guys should hope hopefully i'll be done with that car this week probably have a video out for you early next week but anyway guys if you enjoyed this video hit the like button subscribe if you haven't and we'll see you next time